Welcome back home slices to yours truly, the Kid Leroy's Gaming Channel. And today we'll be playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Campaign. I'm obviously on the bleeding edge of this release, so if you don't know what this game is, it's simple. You're an aspiring dictator attempting to build a military to aid in your world conquest. And our first act on our quest is to train some of the younger talent to be effective military combatants. But before we get into that, look at this scenery. So spectacular. It really makes you sick and guess absolutely bombing the sh out of it until it is flat and full of craters in a couple of days. <laughs> My trusted advisor tells me to pick up the weapon on the table and give these chaps a demonstration. And clearly, we had a bit of a misunderstanding about what he meant by demonstration. But what was made clear was that I'm the alpha male here, and the only way to gain influence these days is to scare others into following you. So although I may have failed the objective described, I succeeded in my first step into creating an authoritarian dictatorship, so take what you will from that. He tells me to shoot at the targets, but fails to mention the proper gun safety requirements that come beforehand. So I guess I'll have to settle for hearing loss in my early 30s, because this prick won't let me put earmuffs on. And damn, if this isn't a dominant display of shooting, I don't know what is. Like, my man's literally got real life aim assist. That's so lit. I soon get bored and spot these men playing with some 1v1 on the blacktop. So I try escape so I can join them, but Foley won't let me join them. I guess this man's about to get publicly, brutally executed, but I'll have to wait until I have the correct audience size for that. I see my man on the court has an absolutely devastating skyhook over that loser. A lot of people think Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is the king of the skyhook, but nah mate. Just have a look at this man's highlight reel. Foley tells me to show the boys how to use a grenade. And now, I'll be honest with you, my grenadiering knowledge is a bit limited, with most of it coming from the Bruno Mars song, I'll catch a grenade for you. So I pull the pin out. That's step one. I know that. But now what? <laughs> After we finish that up, I'm told to head to the pit, but instead, I run over here to challenge Sergeant Barry to a 1 rep max bench press. But instead of spotting me on max weight, the idiot decides to do a couple push ups instead. Screw Foley, you're number one on my execution list. So I head over to the blacktop to check out my boys, Kitty and Macy hooping. And straight away, Macy puts up the weakest shot in basketball history. And then after about three more seconds of disgusting shooting form, I decide to leave. I arrive at the pit to Dunn spinning the maddest yarns I've ever heard in my life. He tells me that those dudes up in the box wrote about 10 lines each in the bar bathroom before training, to which I predictably reply asking if they have any more. Just asking for a friend though. He also tells me about an absolute 10 out of 10 he's been chatting up, and how he's about to hit a home run. But when I ask him what her name is, he tells me, oh don't worry mate, you wouldn't know her, she's from a different school. So I decide to rather than listen to this man talk out of his ass the whole day, to do the training course. So at this point, they tell me I should probably not shoot the civilians, but I see that as more of an optional sort of thing, and carry on taking out everyone inside. Because if you didn't want a bullet in your rib cage, you probably should have thought twice about getting held hostage. And they end up coming out with a course record 1 minute and 13 seconds and they must be so impressed they want me to do it again that's me just leading from the front as usual for some reason when i finish my recommended difficulty is regular what the hell i finessed that course so ignoring the recommendation i took veteran because i'm hard like that literally so we are off on our first mission of conquest and it seems we've met minimal resistance i mean this rpg to the face may say otherwise but i seem to be able to shrug it off reasonably easy i'll make shepherd here then ask me if i bowl over or around the wicket. Hey look mate, I understand you're British and all that, but now probably isn't the greatest time to discuss bowling tactics to alternate handed batsmen. But to be clear, I'm bowling outswing mid-wicket Yorkers six balls and over, two innings long for five days, and a well-timed bouncer to the noggin for the new tail ender. We head up to the vehicles waiting on the bridge, and holy heavens above, damn Corporal Landry Canton, you are thick as all hell. Like any man would do, I inquire into his squat routine, and he tells me he hasn't been to the gym in months and he's always been meaning to go. But when the time actually comes to get up and go, he says to himself, oh, I'm not really in the mood to lift, and so I won't have a very productive session. So I'll go a bit later, maybe at seven, an hour or two after rush hour, so it's a bit quieter. But come 7.01, I go, oh well, it seems like I can't go anymore. I've missed it. All good, I'll just wake up earlier tomorrow and I can get it done and dusted. Only to repeat the cycle over and over and over again. To which I reply, isn't that what a gym membership is? I order in some air support, and they flatten out the building real quick. The lads start cheering and laughing, and I have to say, that's a little bit questionable, 
considering that it was a public hospital filled with innocent civilians. But I guess you can't dwell too much on the negative. So we set off following Curb Stomper, a very appropriately named vehicle. And damn, it looks like the school toilet's up in here. Who gave these kids vapes anyway? On our way through, I threatened multiple civilians with my minigun, and me and the boys start singing our new national anthem, Cooler Than Me, by Mike Posner. Intimidating, yet stylish. We want to send the resistance a message, so we use a classic metaphor and pull up to a school. Cause we're taking these fools to school. But it seems like that was overly predictable, and it's fair to say Curb Stomper is no longer stomping on curbs, and we swiftly escape. But this driver has a knack for leaving me extremely exposed in narrow alleyways, under heavy gunfire. Guess who's next on my so-called demonstration list? But luckily these fellas take care of him for me, albeit by expensive means to the nation's taxpayers. But to be fair, the vast majority of taxpayer money I used to finance buying a pet monkey named Kendrick, and the corresponding clothing and jewellery I would buy him. My boy Kendrick is going to have some hella dank drip, and a little bit of the taxpayer money on my great white shark tank, who I appropriately name JAWS, not after the DJ, but rather an acronym standing for Generic Aquatic Underwater Zamboni. I'm not ready to give up on my metaphor, so we head back there, and I go Call of Duty All-American team on these losers, cause who hangs out at school after 3.15? What absolute nerds. And as always, I teabag the last guide to celebrate the success of my military genius. We head to our extraction point, and see a few boyos trying to flee, and luckily for them, I'm in a very forgiving mood. Lol, just kidding. They get gunned down faster than Kendrick can peel his banana. And on my way through, I see private car. And goddamn, this dude has to be at least seven foot. My guy, you're playing for the wrong rockets. Are you listening? Damn. Uh. Yeah. I also see this red dot on his helmet, a bit of a questionable decoration having a giant target on your head. But this man could be an absolute genius, cause if I'm the enemy and I'm aiming at his head and I see this bright red target, I'm gonna think, this man wants me to shoot him there, I'm not gonna fall for that, so I'm gonna shoot him in his pinky toe. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. You're getting promoted to the head of defense, effective immediately. And so, we end up taking the city, and we also need to get this kid's eyes checked, cause I have no clue who he's talking to, but all good, that's a problem for later. We head off to go skiing in the mountains, because what's brutally ruling an impressed nation when you can't have a little bit of fun? And trust McTavish to be smashing back a pack of darts. This man's lungs are in worse shape than my quads after continual neglect of leg day. He tells me to spot him while his wheezy ass tries to climb up. And by wheezy ass, I don't mean his burnt, deflated, party balloon lungs. I mean he properly let one rip as he was going up. So I tell him to piss off. I'm not spotting you. What have you been eating, mate? Two month old seafood drizzled with baked beans? Either those cocaine gerbils have dyed up your bunghole, or you need to see a doctor. Then, old mate just decides to jump off this cliff out of the blue. And oh well. GG's, guess he's dead, might as well give it a go as well. And that didn't go to plan. McTavish tells me to hold on, and not to let go. Oh thanks mate, I was actually planning on letting go and just falling to my imminent death, cause you know, that's what you want to do in these types of situations. But you know what, now that you said that, I think I'm gonna hold on. Thanks mate, you're a true lifesaver. We spot a couple lads ahead, but it turns out these guys watch Netflix series and then immediately tell everyone that they can possibly contact how good it is, and that they should definitely watch it. Like cool story bro. How about I watch this lead and bed into your skull? It looks like we stumbled upon a secret celebrity party and the nerve of these guys not inviting the Lord Mayor. So I do what I must and make a run for the fuel pipes and rig it with C4. No more sniffing petrol for you A-list celebrities. I meet back up with McTavish who has successfully spiked the punch bowl with vodka. I mean a pretty weak prank, but like, whatever. And then he has the audacity to give me lip about taking so long. Like, I know you're trying to be smart, but I'll tell you what, it doesn't look too smart when you're talking to Obi-Wan's ghost. What did you sniff, mate? We hop inside and I find a hard drive that will give me unlimited V-Bucks, so I can buy that new glizzy skin I want from the item store. But it looks like McTavish has dropped the ball again. He tells me to blow the fuel pipes as a distraction, but I wait a bit and play a classic prank on him. He thinks he's about to get executed, but last minute, I swoop in with the assist. Guess they should have invited me. Losers. We make like some potato chips and dip to the ski slopes. I didn't actually bring any skis, so we shoot these guys off their snowmobiles. And boom, free ride. On our way down, I end up killing quite a few people, and some people might have a hard time dealing with doing this, but the way I think of it is, they're all someone's son, someone's wife or dad, and that usually makes it a bit easier, as at least they had a family. And holy d 
so we are moving fast. I have no clue how I'm controlling this, but McTavish dares me to do this jump at the bottom, and I ain't no pussy, so I absolutely shred it and do a backflip. You can't see it, but I definitely did it, trust me. And then we leg it into an awaiting helicopter. Ski trip successful. <laughs> Thank you.